All right, so in this video, I'm going to give you a couple examples of multivariable limits. The first one is I want to either evaluate or show that the following limit doesn't exist. As xy approaches to 0, 0 of xy squared over x cubed plus 2y cubed. Okay, so as always with any limit ever, the first thing you always want to think about is can I plug in the point? In other words, is the function continuous? Because if it is, then we're done. I can already see that that's not going to work here because if I try to plug in 0, 0 for x and y, I get a 0 over 0 indeterminate form. So that didn't work, but you should always try. Okay, in the multivariable limit setting, the next thing that I typically think about doing is approaching along the x-axis and the y-axis. The reason for this is a good way to attack a limit like this is to try to show that it doesn't exist by approaching along different paths. The key idea is remembering that in order for a limit to exist, it has to exist and be the same along any approach you take. The point we're approaching is the origin, which means if we approach this way, or if we approach this way, or if we approach in some goofy way like this, if the limit is going to exist, it has to be the same for all of them. So usually in my mind, the first thing I'll do is I'll think, well, what if I approach along the x-axis and the y-axis? If I get different things, I'm done. And I've shown the limit doesn't exist. Um, so let's approach along the x-axis first. <clears throat> Mathematically, what does it mean to approach along the x-axis? The x-axis is given by the equation y equals 0. So in a multivariable limit, to approach along a certain path, you just impose the restriction given by that equation. In other words, the limit that we want to compute is the limit as x comma y, well, along the, y, or along the x axis, y is 0, of x, again, y is 0, so this is like 0 squared over x cubed plus 2 times 0 cubed. And this is going to turn into a one variable limit. That's the point of picking a path approach, is that when you approach by a path, it turns into a one variable limit. Now, this one's pretty easy, but let me spell it out in details just to make everything clear. To send a point x0 to 0, 0, y is already at 0, so it suffices to just send x to 0. Now, what do we have on top? x times 0 is 0. This term is 0 here, so in the denominator, it's just x cubed. Well, 0 over x cubed is 0. x is never 0 because it's a limit, right? So this expression is just identically 0. So we're taking a limit as x approaches 0 of 0, which is 0. OK. Now, that was just one approach. We showed that if I approach this way, the multivariable limit tends to 0. That does not mean that the overall limit is 0. That just means by one approach, we get 0. Like I said, usually the next thing I think about in my head is this was the x-axis. Maybe we could try approaching along the y-axis. And I won't do this out explicitly just because I can already see that it's not going to give me any new information. If I set x to be 0, The same exact thing happens. This is 0 over 0. Sorry, 0 over 
two y cubed, which is 0, the whole thing is 0. which is already something that we got. 0 is not different than 0, so this doesn't tell us anything. Does this imply that the whole limit is 0? Nope, that was only two paths. When we approach along different paths, the only thing you can do is conclude that the limit doesn't exist this way. So anyway, this is all in my head. I can kind of see that if I approach along the y-axis, it's not going to give me new information. So I need to pick a different approach. And if I look at this, what stands out to me is there's some asymmetry in terms of x and y. Uh, and usually the next approach I'll pick is some kind of diagonal approach, like y equals x, to try to exploit that asymmetry. Let's try that, see if it works. So maybe down here I'll approach along the line y equals x. If I do this, again, mathematically, it just amounts to imposing this restriction in the original limit. I'll do that over here. So if I impose y equals x, this limit turns into the limit as x comma y is x approaches 0, 0 of x, y is x, so times x squared over x cubed plus 2x cubed. Again, this turns into a single variable limit. To send a point of the form x, x to 0, 0, all I have to specify is that I'm sending x to 0, x cubed on top, x cubed plus 2x cubed is 3x cubed. So in the denominator, there's a 3x cubed. These cancel out. And we're left with evaluating the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 third, which 1 third is constant. It's 1 third. Uh, what does this show? Unlike this approach, which would also give 0, something we had already obtained, the fact that we got a different number here, that's good. This shows that the limit can't exist. We approach along one direction and get 0. But then we approach along a direction like this, and we got 1 third. So to finish it off, I would say since 0 doesn't equal 1 third, this limit does not exist. Let's do one more example. Um, this time, I'll keep the, the outline here, and I'll just change the function. The limit that I want to tackle is uh, sine squared of x squared plus y squared. Actually, let's put all of this under square root. Square root of x squared plus y squared. over x squared plus y squared. OK.
As usual, the first thing I'll quickly consider is if I can just plug in the point zero, zero. But again, I'm not going to be able to do that because both the numerator and the denominator, sine of zero is zero, zero, zero over zero is indeterminate. So that doesn't work. Now, in the previous example, I started off by picking some path approaches to try to show that the limit doesn't exist. But for an example like this, the first thing that stands out to me is the fact that I have an x squared plus y squared a couple of times. That screams polar coordinates to me. So in general, if you get a limit where you see something like, or if you see exactly x squared plus y squared, this is an indication that polar coordinates could be insightful. Now, really quickly, I'll remind myself of the polar coordinate equations or the relevant things that lets us translate from Cartesian to um, polar coordinates. The main one, and the reason why it's going to be useful here, is that x squared plus y squared is r squared. And then x, in general, is r cosine theta. y is r sine theta. <clears throat> For this particular example, this is all we'll need. OK. So what I'll do is I'll take this limit and I'll convert it into polar coordinates. So what did we start with? Sine squared of the square root of x squared plus y squared over x squared plus y squared. If I convert this into polar coordinates, what happens? The function that we're taking a limit of is relatively easy to convert. The denominator here is x squared plus y squared, which is exactly r squared. And then on top, we've got sine squared of the square root of x squared plus y squared is r. That's how the function transforms. How does this thing change? The whole point behind converting a limit to polar coordinates is that polar coordinates, the coordinate r, describes how far you are away from the origin. So the limit is taking all points and sending them to the origin. To describe that process in polar coordinates, all we have to say is send r to 0. And you kind of squash every point radially into the origin like this. So converting a limit like this into polar coordinates, all we have to say is that we need to send r to 0. And again, this has turned into a one variable limit. Now, what happens here? Here's what I would do. I'm going to use L'Hopital's rule. I notice that both the top and bottom are squared, so I could make this a little easier for myself by pulling out the power of 2. And I'll write this like sine of r over r. Whoops. The point being, I can move the limit inside the parentheses by continuity. And then I have something slightly easier to evaluate. Now, if you came across this limit in a single variable calculus class, L'Hopital's rule. Easy, right? One thing to be careful about is when you start when you first start learning about multivariable limits, you hear about how there's no multivariable L'Hopital's rule. And that's correct. So it might feel a little uncomfortable to be doing L'Hopital's rule here, but the idea is this is not a multivariable limit. It's a one variable limit. We're evaluating this one variable limit in the process of understanding a multivariable limit, but this expression itself 
only one variable. So we can use L'Hopital's rule. So continuing from down there, inside the blah, blah, blah squared, the numerator and denominator are both going to 0. That's an indeterminate form of type 0 over 0, which means we can use L'Hopital's rule. The derivative of the numerator is cosine of r. The derivative of the denominator is 1. Then, after, have, after doing that, the inside limit here is continuous. We can just evaluate at r equals 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. So this is 1 over 1. And we're done. This shows that this multivariable limit, first of all, exists. And it equals 1. <laughs>